Hey, GED students, I have a student, Seku, who messaged me on our Light and Salt Learning Facebook page. She was working on the GED math crash course algebra unit doing the simplifying versus solving review and got stumped on numbers nine and 10. Now, since she had been getting through this okay, knowing when to simplify and knowing when to solve, and then all of a sudden she got stumped on nine and 10, I'm guessing the big issue here is not really the simplifying or solving, it's the fractions. And honestly, that's what it is for most of you guys. Second, you see a fraction, you start panicking. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? But remember, okay, just chill. Two important things to remember when you see a fraction in the land of algebra. One, you get your TI whenever you're doing algebra. You get your calculator, okay? So if there's some kind of calculation you forget how to do that's challenging to do by hand, we can do that in our calculator. Second thing is you actually have a lot of power, specifically when you're solving in algebra, to do what I call getting rid of fractions. Uh, because when we're solving, we have the power to do whatever we want, um, we can use that to make our little fraction life a lot easier. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and get started. So directions to this worksheet said something really interesting. I was kind of being a jerk. They said, simplify or solve each expression, equation, or inequality as appropriate, as appropriate. I was being rude. Uh, I didn't tell you when you're supposed to simplify and when you're supposed to solve, because I really want you guys to be able to identify that by looking at it. So let's look for some clues, first of all. So this is what I noticed with number nine. Number nine is an equation. Now let me show you how I see that. I can see that I have one mathematical expression set equal to another mathematical expression. That, by definition, is an equation. Equations can be solved. When I know the relationship between two expressions, I can solve the mystery and figure out what x is equal to. So that is my goal. I'm going to be solving here because it's an equation I can solve. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. So there's a, actually different ways I could do number nine, uh, but let's just deal with the first thing that's freaking us all out, first of all. Everybody hates this fraction here. Everybody looks at this gross fraction and freaks out. Well, it's really easy to get rid of a fraction if you remember that a fraction bar, so write this down if you don't know it, a fraction bar means the same as divide. It can literally be translated as divide. So one way to read this or think about this right-hand side is this is three times the quantity of x minus 7, all divided by 2. Okay, now why do I bother to point that out? Well, because like I said, when you have this equation here, you have this relationship between two expressions, you can literally do whatever you want as long as you keep the two sides equal. So I'm going to use that power to get rid of this fraction. And we get rid of things by doing the opposite. So that little fraction bar 2 means divided by 2. So I'm going to do the opposite of dividing by 2. I'm going to take this entire right-hand side and multiply by 2. Notice how I have that two nice and high, so you can tell it's a multiplier and not a divider. And you say, Kate, can I do that? And literally, I say, you can do whatever you want to an equation, as long as you keep the two sides equal. So if I do that on the right-hand side, I'm just going to go ahead and do that on the left-hand side as well. And now I'll have my equivalent equation, so we're legal. Um, and so let's see what happens. 2 times 6 is 12. Now a lot of students freeze up here. Kate, I don't know how to do this ugly, gross math. You forget what you were trying to do, guys. You're forgetting your goal. Remember that dividing by 2 and multiplying by 2, they're opposites. Opposites in math cancel out. And so what's going to happen is this divide by 2 and this multiply by 2 is just gone. It's gone. And all I'm left with is 3 times the quantity of x minus 7. Now, there's actually two different ways I can go from here, okay? So I don't care which way you go. If you uh, do it the other way than what I'm going to, I'm not going to show both because it's confusing, but I'm going to uh, do one of the ways. If you do it another way, you get to the same answer. We're both correct, okay? So here we go. Next thing I see, so my goal here is to get x alone. That's what it means to solve, to get x alone so I can know what he's equal to. And I see that right now this x minus 7 is kind of trapped in this grouping. 
Um, and so what I want to do is I want to untrap them and I'm going to do that by getting rid of the three. Okay. So let me show you what I mean. This three is multiplying by this entire grouping. See it shoved up against the parentheses. Again, you can get rid of something by doing the opposite. What is the opposite of multiplying by three? Hmm. Well, it's dividing by three. So I'm going to take this entire side and divide by three. And you say, can I do that? And I say, again, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you keep the two sides equal. So you got to jump across that equal sign, do the exact same thing over there so the two sides remain equal. And now let's see what our new equivalent equation will be. Well, if I take 12 and divide by 3, I get 4. And then on this side, again, don't let yourself get intimidated. The opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3. Those two things are gone. And that grouping, that x minus 7, is untrapped just like I wanted. And I'm almost done now. X is almost alone on his side of the equation. But he's not totally alone because take a look. You can see I still have that minus 7 hanging out. Well, if I want to get rid of a minus 7, I have to do the opposite of subtracting 7. Of course, the opposite of subtracting 7 is adding 7. Now, make sure when you go to balance that you go all the way across the equal sign, okay, to the other side to keep your balance. So I end up adding 7 to both sides, and let's see what my new equivalent equation will be. On the right-hand side, subtracting 7 and adding 7 are opposites. X is alone just like I wanted. And on that left-hand side, there's the math to do. 4 minus 7 is 11. Now notice a couple of things. X is alone on his side of the equal sign. So now I know what X is equal to. X is 11. I am done. This is solved. All right. Let's take a look at the next example. Again, first question I need to ask myself since the directions were rude and didn't tell me is, am I simplifying or am I solving? So I don't have an equation this time, but I have something very similar. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look how I have an expression on the left-hand side. I have an expression on the right-hand side. And I have this relationship symbol in the middle. Uh, so it's just like an equation, except for this time, the relationship between the two sides isn't one of equality, equalness, but it's one of inequality. It's telling us that the two sides are related, but not such that they're equal. In this case, the left-hand side is larger. It's greater than the right-hand side. But nonetheless, it's still a relationship. And when I have a relationship between two or more expressions, I can solve. I can work to get the letter alone. I have the, you know, power to figure out what f is actually equal to. Let's use that to our advantage. Okay, so again, when I'm solving, I'm working to get the letter alone, so I know what it's actually equal to. This one's actually easier than the last one, even though that fraction scares a lot of students. I only have two numbers to get rid of this time, two-thirds and three. Uh, let's remember that when we're solving, we work the order of operations backwards, backwards. So I'm going to move anything adding or subtracting first. So let's take away that three. Actually, let me address that because I just said we were going to move anything adding or subtracting first. But in the last example, we did um, the subtraction last of all. You might be saying, Kate, you're a hypocrite and a liar. But in this last example, the subtraction was trapped inside of a grouping. That's why it had to go last. Because if I'm working the order of operations backwards, yeah, plain old addition and subtraction comes first. But anything in a grouping comes last. All right. Okay. So this plus 3 is not inside of a grouping of any kind. It's just plain old addition or subtraction. I'm going to get rid of it. All right, let's see what my new inequality will be after I make this change. So adding 3 and subtracting 3 are opposites. So what do I have left on the left-hand side? Well, just that sucker, the thing that's scaring you so badly, the 2 thirds F. Okay, well, it shouldn't scare you so badly that you can't at least write it down. Okay, so just write it down and don't panic. We're going to breathe through this together. Okay, now I've done nothing to affect the inequality symbol. Um, and so it just drops down, and then there's the math to do on the right-hand side. 11 minus 3, of course, is 8. Now, I'm almost, almost done, but a lot of students just freak out, don't know how to deal with this 2 thirds F. Now, there's actually two ways uh, to deal with it. I'm going to deal with it the, um, the most, I think, 
One way is easier and one way is more intuitive. Okay, so I don't care which way you do it again, but I'm just gonna do it the intuitive way. Take a look at how this two thirds is shoved up against this F. Just like always when a number is shoved up against a letter like this, they're multiplying. So literally, if I wanted to get rid of this two thirds that's multiplying by F, I could do the opposite. I could divide by two thirds. Okay, now I can do whatever I want to an inequality, just like with an equation, as long as I do it to both sides so that the relationship between the two sides remains the same. Now, you go, Kate, I don't know how to do this ugly math. And I say, no, but your calculator does. Okie dokie. So even if you forgot everything you ever knew about fraction computations, we have this lovely TI. Let me show you how to do it in a TI. So on the left-hand side, multiplying by two-thirds and dividing by two-thirds are opposites. They cancel F as alone, just like I wanted. I haven't done anything to affect the inequality symbol, so it's going to stay the same. And then I have this. Read this. This says 8 divided by two-thirds. And that's when I'm going to type into my calculator, eight divided by two-thirds. Here's how I'm going to do it. Of course, I'll type the number eight. And then I'm going to use this divided by symbol just because it makes it less easy. I don't have to mess around with parentheses. <laughs> and then to get that fraction two-thirds in your TI calculator, you use the N over D button, N over D button. So I'm going to type N over D and guys, when you do, by the way, you should get this nice horizontal fraction bar to type into. If you don't, if you get a diagonal fraction bar like this, you're in the wrong mode. Go change your calculator, get into the mode setting and change your calculator to math print mode. But anyway, you should get that nice horizontal fraction bar and I'm going to type uh, two thirds. So eight divided by two on the top arrow down to the bottom three and then type enter and you see that it's actually something quite simple. It's just 12. And so now I have this expression. Oh, let me say that again. I was about to lie to you. Now I have this inequality where F is alone on its side of the inequality symbol, so it is solved. I just found out that F must be greater than 12. Please don't do what a lot of students do and tell me the answer is 12. No, the answer isn't 12. In fact, 12 would be a lie. The answer is every number greater than 12. That's why this says F is greater than 12. So 12 isn't greater than 12, okay? But 13 and 14 and 17 and a half and 19.24 and a million 633 are all greater than 12. So that entire inequality is the answer. F is every number that's bigger than 12. That's your answer. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.